Hi, I'm Gary Lucas, and I'm here today in the Knitting Factory, Brooklyn. This is the place where I recently did a tribute to my late great partner and collaborator, Jeff Buckley. And it's important to me because not only do I still feel Jeff's spirit here, but the original Knitting Factory in Manhattan is where I first brought him on a stage and uh, unleashed several of my greatest songs, Grace and Mojo Pin. Thank you all for coming down. Right now, without further ado, former Captain B Park guitarist, wizard, Gary Lucas, Jeff Buckley. In the 90s, the music scene was anything goes in New York City. It was really a phenomenon, especially around the Knitting Factory Club. On any given night, you'd see the cream of great musicians who were coming from jazz, rock, and experimental music, world music sometimes. Every night would be a tiny revolution. Somebody would come up with some innovation, but history was made that night. You know, somebody who was lucky enough to be there to catch it would go away thinking like, wow, I had my mind blown. I never heard music played like that before. CBGB's was another mecca too. CBGB's though was more on the rock side of things, flourishing in the heyday of punk rock with the Ramones and uh, television and groups like that. This is a description of the first time I ever heard Jeff sing when he came over to my apartment to rehearse one of his father's songs titled The King's Chain. From his innermost depths, Jeff let forth one primordial ululation after another. He was wailing, suspended in the void between pure suffering and total ecstasy, far beyond his father's lyrics now speaking in an unknown tongue. As I continued to play the almost Zeppelin-like riff, Jeff folded back into himself on the couch, a skinny, awkward, beautiful boy again, and gazed across at me with staring, soulful eyes while my guitar loop faded out slowly. I shook my head in disbelief and utter awe and amazement at his stellar vocal performance. Jeff, I said, you're a total fucking star. Really, he replied, shy and tentative, do you think so? Absolutely. Suddenly it became clear, here sitting before me was the male lead singer I'd been secretly longing for to complete my vision of Gods and Monsters, my band. And I knew in my heart that my musical future lay not with the partner I was currently shackled to. When I was on stage with Jeff, it was total ecstasy. I never felt so inspired to be really with another performer as I did with Jeff. Uh, there was such a magical quality to his voice and uh, the kind of love that we felt back coming from the audience always was just beautiful. The way Grace came together was a really magical moment in my life. It was almost like I had stumbled on a key that unlocked secrets to the universe when I first was, sat there in my apartment, basically just passing my fingers over the strings of my guitar until I heard some magic notes. I think that Grace is so special to so many people because it struck a resonant chord that mirrors the anguish and the joy of living, really. And if you break it down and analyze it harmonically even, 
There's a lot of tension going from major key to minor key and back throughout the song. And I think this is very unusual in, in, in a pop song, albeit an avant pop song, which is what I would call it. And it kind of mirrors the bittersweet circumstances of life. People who pick up on this have you know, contacted me over the years and I get fantastic emails and often personal encounters with strangers who tell me, your song so affected me, I fell in love to them, I broke up a relationship over them, changed my life. This is what you know, one wants to hear as a creative artist. I go into great detail in the book discussing these songs and the process of them that hopefully will give other musicians, composers, and just interested people who love music insights into the creative process and the joy of collaboration.